Tech Cocktail Sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. All right, can you hear me back there? Yeah. All right, someone scream if I like talk too loud or hold the mic away. So, if you were to ask me six years ago, Svi, what do you think about networking or relationships or knowing people, I would say total fucking bullshit. I was a developer. I was probably about the biggest introvert you know. I was better talking to people on ICQ than like talking to them in person. Yeah, remember ICQ? Yes. Um, better than person. But you know, so when I graduated, you know, I started work at a big consulting firm. Assumed that pretty much my life would be working in a cubicle, writing code, getting paid, you know, well, moving up the chains. They told me to go to these networking events with other people and I'd sit in the corner because what do I need networking for? I just do my job. But then the startup bug kind of bit me and I realized that like, actually, you know, I want to know some people. I want to talk to some people who know something because, you know, Dig, yeah, I remember Dig at the time. Um, Dig was like all about like, you should know someone. So I started you know, going out and meeting people at Capital Cabal and things like that. And I started going to events thinking that there'd be like speakers and they would like tell me what I'm supposed to do. But what I realized at most of those events is I wasn't just like alert getting content. I was meeting people, and I was meeting people that would end up meaning a lot to me. I met people like Justin, who at the time was working for a government contractor, now CMO of a major startup. He ended up starting feeding me business as I started growing my company. People like Mike, who you know, now is my co-founder in many other ventures. And I started meeting these people, and I didn't really try and meet them you know, at, because I was like trying to build a business or trying to win work. But what I realized is as I kept meeting more and more people, my network was growing bigger and bigger and bigger. I was, you know, not only did I have myself looking out for my venture, but I had other people looking out for me too. And I think there's a guy, Gabe Weinberg, if you look him up online, he wrote a really, really interesting thing which has kind of crystallized everything for me, which is your luck surface area. Now, when you think about, you know, and Scott talked a lot about, you know, just being lucky and having all these lucky things happen to you. And what I've learned is that as I have more and more people in my network, luck seems to come in. So I just met a guy named Peter at one of the first events. Peter ended up introducing me to a guy who just, you know, was trying to um, mess around with a lot of startups, helped him out with one of his ventures that I ended up being CTO of that was acquired in 2009 was then seat with the start of my own consulting firm and I didn't know how to win business, I didn't know how to write proposals or contract work. But all of a sudden, you know, just because I met a lot of these people, just you know, just because I just wanted to know them, wanted to know more about them, who they were, but you know, way back when, they started just feeding me work. And for four years I ran an incredibly successful company without spending a dime on advertising or marketing or pitching anything. Just because people knew me and people referred me and existing clients referred me to others. And at the same time, I was actually, while, I, while my network was really the key to my success, I was actually really bad at it. I mean, I was terrible at meeting people in coffee shops, then two weeks later, I'd completely forget about their name. Actually, one of my, one of my current customers actually said that his base, best way of managing his network is seeing who's talking to him and then following up with those people instead. But, so my network was really important to me, but I didn't really have a way to manage it. So I threw together this, you know, this little prototype of something that helps me keep in touch with people, just looks, like, looks at who I'm emailing and reminds me if I'm being a loser and falling out of touch with someone. And I didn't think of much about it at the time, and you know, just through my network, just told some people, oh, I'm working on this cool little idea, it's called Contactually, it's, help, it's like, you know, helps you keep in touch with people. Few, a couple weeks later, I had someone who I kind of knew reach out to me and said, hey, Svi, gra come grab coffee with me. Sat me down and said, Svi, I heard about this from someone, you know, from someone who you knew. I know you and I don't know each other really well. My company would pay $10,000 a year for a product like this. Okay, great. Guess maybe there's something here. Took, it, took a trip out to California for some other business. Happened to get introduced to someone else who I knew recently, a guy named Paul Singh. I guess nowadays you know him as one of the principals of 500 Startups. 
just wanted to meet him, just, you know, just seemed like a friendly guy, just wanted to show him why I was working on Gez's advice, you know, he had been referred to me by a few other people. Two weeks later, I was on a plane to California with two of my co-founders, who I also met through my network. You know, just and spent four months working at a door desk, raising a round of funding for Contactually, launching publicly to where we're at as a full company now today. And so what I've realized is that it's really not about you know what you do as much as about building a stronger team. And now, as the CEO of a company that you know has funding or has raised multiple rounds of funding, you know has received a good amount of press. My role as CEO isn't necessarily to build a product or to get customers, it's to really build the team. It's really to build the luck service area of the company. Because guess what? Out of the 15 investors that we have so far, all but two of them came via my network, via someone who knows me. Yesterday morning, I got a, I got a, bid, I got a bid for a large contract that really came, came down because someone said, hey Svi, I have a potential enterprise sale for you. I spoke to the guy a few times over, you know, didn't really know him that well, but he was in my network. Now, my main goal is building up a network of investors, advisors, and everything, helping manage the relationships for not only myself, but my company. So, if there's anything I can tell you, you know, when you think about like, oh, I don't really need to meet people, I can probably just scoot out of this event. I mean, Scott's completely right. Meet three people here. I mean, we run the, you know, Frank and I run the DC Tech Meetup, and I'm involved in Proudly Made in DC, and what we've learned is it doesn't really matter about the content as much, because the person that's sitting next to you could be your next co-founder. Or he may not be your next co-founder, he may not be anything, but two years later, he may hand you your first enterprise sale. He might be the next investor you meet. So, I mean, you know, as someone who has come from the point of thinking networking is total bullshit to, being someone who really lives or dies by who he knows, and actually founded a startup that's really all about network management and relationship management, just start meeting people. You never really know. You'll, you'll learn amazing things, and it's really all about increasing your luck surface area. So. Thanks.